Hi, back again. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the pre-lab question for the additivity heats of reaction lab, where it asks you to apply Hess's law to show that the first and third equation uh, adds up to, in terms of a series of reactions, adds up to the second one. And then when you do the lab, you will prove that uh, quantitatively. So I'm just going to show you how it would work. Um, and I know I went through a Hess's law problem with you earlier, but hopefully this won't be pretty simple and straightforward. So the first equation in the series is the NaOH solid. And when that solid dissolves in the water, you'll place the one gram of solid in 50 milliliters of water. It turns into the Na ion and the hydroxide ion. Okay, so that's the first equation, and that's a Q. Just you can start using my state symbols, a Q. And then the third equation in the series, actually, it's the second equation in the series, is just the third equation here. So the second one in the series is when you have the Na ion and the hydroxide ion. So this was the reaction where, or this is the reaction that you'll perform where you used aqueous solution of sodium hydroxide and an aqueous solution of hydrochloric acid. And so they're both just ions, uh, solutions of ions in water. And on the other side of that equation, there's H2O liquid and the Na and the chloride ions, Na positive and the Cl negative. And so I going to include my state symbols here. AQ just means that they're ions in solution, liquid water, pure water. There's the AQ for the chloride ion from the hydrochloric acid. AQ, AQ there and here as well. Okay, so now how do those two equations add up to equal the second equation? So let's see exactly what happens here. Now this one's very simple compared to the one that I did in lecture and compared to the one that's in the video that I posted. So if I look at how the species cancel out and what remains, I'll be able to see how reaction number one and reaction number three are the two reactions of the series that add up to reaction number two. So let's see what happens here. So if I have a species that's on the product side of one reaction and on the reactant side of another reaction, they cancel out. So it's kind of like it gets produced, then it gets used up. And again, this is why the state symbols are so important because you want an aqueous to cancel out an aqueous. And then I see the same thing with the hydroxide, the OH, negative aqueous on the product side will cancel with the OH negative on the reactant side in this third reaction. Okay, so now what I see is that that's all that will cancel out. So then what's left here is the NaOH solid and the hydrogen ion from the hydrochloric acid, 
AQ plus the chloride ion from the hydrochloric acid, AQ, and on the product side, right, so I'm just taking all of the things that are left that didn't cancel out. And on the product side, it's H2O liquid and Na ions and Cl ions, Aq, my Q is a little funny, sorry, Cl negative Aq. Okay, so now I still have uh, a few of the species that remain that are the ones that you see in reaction two. So if I look at reaction two, I can see that I, I have the NaOH solid, I have the hydrogen ion, I have the hydrogen ion, I have the chloride ion, I have the H2O liquid, I have the Na ion, the Cl ion, and there they are. So what I've done is I've shown using Hess's law that when I dissolve solid sodium hydroxide in water, and when I react aqueous sodium hydroxide with aqueous hydrochloric acid, that those two reactions are the same reaction as if I take solid sodium hydroxide and dissolve it in aqueous hydrochloric acid. So what you're going to find when you do this quantitatively in this lab, what you'll find is that whatever value you have here, I'm just gonna give a rough number. Let's say your value here comes out to four kilojoules per mole, something of that sort. Actually, they should all come out to be negative values. And let's say here it comes out to something like a negative seven kilojoules. Well, then what you should find when you do your calculations for this, that they should be the sum of these two values. So since the sum of equation one and three leads me to equation two, then the mathematical sum for the delta H for reaction one and reaction three should add up to reaction two. Again, these values are not the actual values. I'm just using a kind of a rough example so you get the idea. Okay, I hope that helps.